Today, we're gonna to be testing out how well every visor fits my Shut F7 VTD. Now, after we put on our video about the Riddell Speed Flex and how all the different visors fit that, we got a ton of comments asking us to do the same thing for this helmet. And since we just put out a review on the Shut F7, check that out. We decided to hit this one up next. So today we're gonna to be testing every visor, how quick and easy they are to install, how quick and easy they come out, and the overall fit. Now the biggest outfit in the room with this is gonna be Shock. They are a channel sponsor and we're basically showing off their direct competitors and how well they compare next to each other. Having said that, we're gonna give completely honest feedback to all the companies involved, including the ones that pay us, and hopefully they all use our feedback and come back with better products next year. Now for this video, I'm gonna be looking at seven of the most popular visors on the market. I'm gonna be looking at three different flat visors, the Nike Vapor Eye Shield, Under Armour Football Visor, and the Next Trend Visor 1. For the bubbled look, we're going again with four different visors. We're going to check out the Next Trend Visor 2, the Oakley Legacy Visor, Oakley Pro Visor, and then my Shock Zero G. Like I said, this is a Shut F7 VTD. And for the face mask on here, I have a F7 TEGOP-NB face mask. That stands for titanium, eye guards, oral protection, and NB, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. The only thing with this face mask that's gonna make it a little more tricky is the eye guards kind of mess up the placement on some visors. Having said that, this face mask is super popular and a very similar style, which is a little more open, is easily the most popular style among receivers in the NFL. Because this helmet is majorly worn by skill position players, I think this is gonna be a good representation. It's also all I have, so deal with it. Also a side note for this, if your shut helmet does have a twist lock system on the top, meaning there's no screws, the helmet just twists in here, three of the visors off the bat are gonna be removed from the list. Both of them from Next Trend and the Shock Zero G. If there's a center tab on the visor, it will not work with the twist lock, so you're already limited in your options. All right, first up is gonna be the Nike Vapor Eye Shield. And if you watch Riddell Speed Flex video, you'll know that this thing did not do well. Today it did worse. Now in the last video, the clips barely fit over the face mask, but in this video, the Nike Vapor clips don't even fit over the face mask. So I gave up. If they're gonna make a visor and the clips that it come with do not work with either of the standard most popular helmets, I don't think you buy it. Having said that, I did slip it underneath without them and it did line up okay. You can actually see though that the whole placement on this visor is right in line with the eye guards, which means any other clip you try to install, it's probably not gonna work great either. You can do zip ties, but overall, I just wouldn't pick this one up at all. Next up, we have the Under Armour football visor and this I have in like a silver chrome finish. Now this flat visor slips under really easy. The only drawback so far is gonna be the whole alignment. The holes on this visor are really close to the eye guards and with Under Armour's big bulky clips, they barely fit around it. Again, that is gonna be one of the only downsides of the space mask for this test, but you'll see some other ones do better. Outside of that, I love the Under Armour clips. I love how the threads are on the front and the back piece is just like a nut. It goes on really fast and it's super satisfying to spin on. Crazy fast to install. Checking the fit, it does sit pretty far back from the face mask, but that's just because be able to get clearance for these clips, it had to kind of sit a little farther away. I could scooch it forward a little bit, but most flat visors are gonna fit similar to this. I also really like how wide this visor is. It basically wraps around the entire face mask, which looks really good too. Taking it apart is super fast and that screw off, visor pops out and you're basically done. It doesn't get much faster than this. That's what she said. <laughs> Overall, this is a pretty good option for a flat visor, but these visor clips and these eye guards together is not really a great match. Next up, we have the Next Trend Visor 1 in a clear finish. Now it does have a flat shape and the clips for this resemble the old Oakley style clips. However, they did add a thumb screw on the back, which does make it a little quicker. Getting the visor in is super easy. The biggest challenge with Next Trend Visors is actually gonna be the clips. So the Next Trend Visor clips are kind of like three different pieces. You have a sandwich piece that goes and wraps around the face mask, then you have the screw on the back. Well, on the front of the sandwich piece, you have the threads and then it has to feed through another rubber piece and then into the screw. Trying to line up three different pieces all together, especially when you're trying to like force a visor into place can be really tricky. However, I did like how the clips are kind of interchangeable and you can swap them to different sides and each of them will give you a slightly different fit on the visor. Either way, still pretty fast to install. Checking out the fit, it is equally as good as the Under Armour visor and the whole placement is slightly farther back, which gives the clips the clearance they need. There's nothing bad I can say about this. With a flat visor, this is gonna be your best bet. Taking it apart is even faster. Screws come off, visor pops out, and you're basically done. Overall, the fit is great and the visor goes in great too. If I had to rank these three, I'd go number one is gonna be Next Trend, number two is gonna be Under Armour, and number three, if for whatever reason you had to, you could do the Nike Vapor Eye Shield with zip ties. This video is sponsored by no one. Well, I guess kind of us. And if you guys didn't know, me and Devin are trying our best to give you guys access to all the same products as NFL players. And some of the most highly requested ones have been the Nike dry fits, some of the arm sleeves, and some of the towels and ski masks and that kind of stuff. Because these products aren't always available to the consumer and sometimes just the NFL player, we've taken it on ourselves to go get them for ourselves. 
and set them up where you can buy them too. This by far is gonna be the most popular product. This is the standard Nike dry fit that all NFL players wear. Now, most guys go for a baggy look. So if you do wanna pick one of these up for yourself, I would size up. A couple things that we did to try and make it a little more custom for you is if you want the standard Nike dry fit, you can just pick it up nice and plain like the NFL players would, but you can also add customization. If you want on the sleeves, you can add your number and it'll go underneath the Nike logo. Or if you wanna put something down the sleeve, you can do that too. You can add an Instagram handle, a nickname, anything you want. That kind of customization is available across all of our products. So the three that we're starting out with are gonna be these Nike Dry Fit. We also do have sleeves. Again, you can add your own customization and numbers to. We have these ski masks like Jalen Ramsey wears. And then next we'll be coming out with the skinny towels to match. If you do wanna pick any of these up, they are linked in the description down below. And we have no coupon codes or any discounts or anything. And frankly, because we're almost making no money on these. These are really expensive to get from Nike. Hence why they're not really available to the consumer. So we're trying to just get them to you as easily as possible and then basically just cover our costs. So if you wanna check out our new store and get all the same products as the NFL players, check out the first link in the description down below. All right, back to the video. Next up, we're gonna be looking at the bubbled visors. Now, as a whole, bubbled visors, in my opinion, do look a little better, but they are a little bit trickier to install. Let's take a look at our options. First up, we have the Next Trend Visor 2, again, in a clear finish. Like I mentioned here, the clips can go on in different directions, and these clips, you actually wanna go opposite the way that they did with the flat visor. Now, it will take you a minute to kind of figure out which way the clips do fit better on, but once you have that, the visor slips in super easy, and again, it is really quick to install. To get this bubbled visor, into place, the best thing I found to do is get one screw on one side, get it about three quarters of the way there, then line up the visor on the other side, get that one 100% of the way there, and then come back to the original one and do that last 25% and get it a nice snug fit. And so it did take a little bit longer just to get this visor exactly where I wanted it. Now looking at the fit of this, the visor does look good with the bubble look in there, but you can actually see this visor sticks a little bit lower than some of the other ones that we'll show next. The biggest place this is gonna be an issue when it comes to fog from your breath. The lower your visor sits, the closer it is to your mouth, which means more breath is gonna hit the front of that visor and create fog in your face. So you want your visors to fit as close to that top bar on your face mask as possible. Outside of that, the visor fit is really nice. I wish I could get it a little bit closer to the face mask, but with these clips, that's as close as it's gonna get. Still pretty good. Taking it off is super quick. Screws out, visor pops out, clips come off, you're done. Overall, the fit is really good and it's the cheapest bubbled visor on this list, so pretty good option. Next up, we have the Oakley Legacy Visor. Now, this is the visor from Oakley that you're supposed to use on your Shut F7, where the Oakley Pro Visor is what you're supposed to use if you have a Riddell Speedflex. Starting off, Oakley makes my favorite clips by far. Their quick release system is really easy to get on. It's really low profile. There's a ton of benefits to it. The fit around the bars is kind of tight where it stays in place, but not too tight where it's hard to move, so it makes installation a lot easier. Now, this visor goes under so easy that it actually went a little bit too far and I actually had to kind of pull it back out and get it into place. But once you have the visor in the right area, you can pretty much hear it snap into place. Then you just line up the clips from the other side, add the screws and you're done. It's pretty quick. The visor does kind of naturally want to sit a little bit back from just the way the clips are kind of snug underneath the face mask. So you will need to again do the same technique where you put a clip on, hold it against the face mask, put the other clip on and then retighten the first one. Installation time is pretty on par with the rest. Looking at the fit, like I mentioned, these clips are really low profile and I do like those a lot. I also like the colorway options they have too. The bubble wraps behind the bars nicely. The Oakley tabs are also not too oversized and bulky like some of the flat visors, specifically the Under Armour and the Nike. You can also see the visor sits a little bit higher, which is like gonna be a lot better for dealing with fog from your breath. Taking it off is slightly longer just because of the threads on the screw are a little bit longer, so it does take a couple more turns to get them out. But overall, so far, this is gonna be the best option for your Shut F7 so far. Watch till the end though. Next up, we have the Oakley Pro Visor. Remember, this is not made or intended to be used by the Shut F7, but I already know guys out there are gonna get the Oakley Pro Visor because it's more expensive or they have Riddell Speedflex, and they're gonna get an F7 and try and put it on the one. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, but again, it is not recommended that we do it by us or Oakley. Now it does slip under the face mask easy, but you can just see it sits way too far back. Putting the clips on again, super easy, but you will need to do that same technique where you really have to press and hold it against the visor. This one is not made to fit. You can see how far out those tabs flex, and you're gonna have to really pull them towards the face mask to get a good fit. Once installed, you can see the fit is not as good as the legacy visor. This tab stick out higher. From the front, it looks good. But the only two ways to tell are either gonna be from the top or the bottom. You can just see that this visor is too narrow and is not made to contour to the face mask or the helmet style of a Shut F7. Taking it off is almost identical to the legacy. Screws out, visor pops out, clips kind of pop off around nice and easy. You're done. Overall, the Oakley Legacy fits better and is cheaper. I wouldn't pick this one up if you only have a Shut F7. Last one up is gonna be the Shox Zero G 2.0. Now with this visor, it does fit slightly higher in a helmet, which is why it was made for Riddell Speedflex, which has no tabs or screws in the middle, so it could sit a little bit higher under the face mask. Now with this shut face mask, you are gonna have to loosen your screws a little bit to allow that visor to slip under the clip slightly. Doing this will require a screwdriver, which is one more tool than the rest of them, and again, will take a little bit more time. Put the clips on, which are different than any other one. These are like a rubber gasket that kind of goes around with a thread on it. I like these with this eye guard because the rubber is more malleable and allows it to press up against the eye guard in ways like a hard plastic, like the Oakley and Under Armour don't. The other place where you do lose 
install time on this is the threads are very long on the Shock Zero G. So just getting those posts on the back takes a long time. It's a lot of turns to get this thing snugged up. Now on this, I took way longer to install than I thought only because I kind of fumbled around a bit from the beginning before I grabbed my screwdriver. So it won't take this long, but again, still pretty long install. Let's see if the fit's worth it. So on the face mask, you can see in the middle where your breath is, this is the closest option to the face mask. So the fit here is really good. The visor matches the contour of the face mask nice. From the bottom, the fit is pretty much identical to the Oakley Legacy, which are both really good. Taking it off again will be a little bit of a pain because you have these long thumb screws that'll take a while to get off. And then once you have the visor popped out, you're gonna have to retighten your screws at the top of the helmet as well. Overall, the fit is great, but I'm not sure it's gonna be worth the amount of time it takes to install this, especially on a sideline. So what's the final decision? The best fitting flat visor goes to the Next Trend Visor 1. Fits good, good price, can't ask for much more. For the bubbled visor, you have two options. If you only think for the rest of your life you're gonna have a shut helmet or a shut F7 specifically, I would go with the Oakley Legacy visor. The reason is because it fits almost identical to the Shox Zero G without the added install time. So it'd probably be my pick. However, if you want a Speedflex or any other Riddell helmet in the future, I would probably go with the Shox Zero G instead. The reason being is yes, it does take a little bit longer to install if you do have an F7, but it fits both an F7 and Riddell Speedflex, where if you wanna go with the Oakley Legacy, it's not gonna fit great on your Riddell Speedflex if you have to do switch a switch over. Same thing, if you have a Riddell Speedflex and you have an Oakley Pro Visor, it's not gonna fit on your F7, which means you're gonna need two visors if you have two helmets. So yes, on the F7, the Shox Zero G does take a little bit longer to install, but having one visor instead of two might also be nice for your budget. So pros and cons to both. Either way, I'll leave links in the description to every visor we talked about. Thanks for watching. Comment what helmet I should do next.